Here's an apple, and this is apple juice. Depending on the ripeness of this apple, we determine how this juice will taste. If the apple is perfectly ripe, the juice will taste delicious, but if I were to squeeze this too early or too late, the juice probably won't be as good. So the juice is a derivative of this apple. The apple determines how the juice will taste. And if the cost of apple goes up, so does the juice. Stocks and options work the same way. In this case, stocks is the apple and the juice is the options. So whatever the price of the stock does will always affect the price of the options. And this is where the five Greeks come in. They tell me how the price of the options will be affected. If you haven't already, I highly recommend you watch my options for beginner video first. And as always know that this is for entertainment and educational purposes only. This is not financial advice. So first let's start with the Delta. It's easy to know that if the stock price moves up a dollar, I make $1 for every share I own. But how do I know how much I'll make on my options? Well, that's what the Delta is for. It tells me how much the value of my options will increase or decrease for every $1 move of the stock. So for example, let's say the stock JRY is trading at $100. And if I buy a call option on it for $5 and the Delta shows 50 cents, that means if JRY's price goes up a dollar to 101, the value of my call option will increase by the delta, which in this case is 50 cents. So my option value goes up to 550. Or if instead JRY's price dropped the dollar to 99, my option value decreases by the delta to $4.50. Again, the delta tells me how much the value of my option will change for every $1 move of the underlying stock. But what about if the stock price moves only 60 cents, not the whole dollar? How do I calculate that? Well, the math is simple. All I need to do is multiply the delta with however much the price moved. So in this case, it would be the 50 cents delta times the 60 cents move in price, which equals to 30 cents. So my call value would go up from 5 to 530. Let's check out a real example. So this was Apple last week and the price was at 181.16 and let's say I want to buy a call option on it. So in the options chain, I can see the strike price, which is the price I'll have the right to buy Apple at. And then I have the mark, which is the cost I'll have to pay to have that right. And here I added the delta. So if I buy this 180 call option, the delta shows 58 cents. So if Apple stock goes up a dollar to 182.16, the value of my call option goes up by the delta, which comes out to $5.76. Or if the price drops a dollar to 180.16, my call option goes down by the delta to $4.60. Pretty simple. Now here's why options are so attractive. Aside from the leverage, the return I get on my money is much higher. So let's compare this. If I bought 100 shares of Apple at 181.16 and it moved up a dollar to 182.16, I would have made $100 on my $18,000 investment, which is what, like a fraction of 1% return on my money? But my one call option made 58 cents on $5.18. Since one contract equals to the same 100 shares, that comes out to a total of a $58 profit on just a $518 investment, which is about an 11% return on my money. And my risk exposure was much less too, because in stock, I had to put up 18,000 to make that 100 bucks, with the chance of losing it all, no matter how unlikely that is, if Apple went to zero. But with buying options, I can only lose what I paid for the option premium, which here is just $518. So why don't I just buy options over stocks every time? Well, if I look back into the options chain, there's a date here that says 28th of March. And there's the catch. That's when my option contract expires. So if I were to time travel forward to that expiration date and Apple stock stayed at 182.16, my 100 shares of stock would still be up $100 in profit but my one call option is now actually down $302. Wait, what? How does that work? Well, remember the 180 call option that I bought? That gives me the right to buy Apple at $180 per share. At expiration, Apple is trading at 182.16. So if I were to exercise my option to buy Apple at 180 and sell it at its current trading price of 182.16, I make the difference, which is $2.16. 
But since I paid $5.18 for the option, that's the difference where I lose, which is 302. And since one contract equals to 100 shares, the total comes out to a $302 loss. So where I lost value in is in time. And this is where theta comes in. Theta tells me how much the option value will lose after one day. I like to think of it like renting an apartment. Let's say I paid $3,000 for 30 days of rent, which is pretty common here in LA, but I only live in it for the first 15 days and my friend wants to move in and take over the last 15 days. Well, that rent is now worth only half at $1,500 because there's only 15 days left in the rental agreement. So it's only fair to collect $1,500 of the rent from my friend if I move out early. And this works similar with options. As an option buyer, it's almost like I'm renting the potential for the stock to move in my favor. I'm paying for time to be given the right to purchase or sell a stock within a certain period. So the more time I use in my agreement, the more it loses its value. It's not an if or a maybe. It's 100% certain that it will lose some value as each day passes leading up to the expiration date. Because unlike price, where it can go up, down, or sideways, time can only move in one direction, at least for now. So going back to the Apple example, Apple was trading at 181.16, and let's say I buy the same 180 call option for $5.18. But remember, these expire, so if I look here, it shows I have 31 days until expiration. It shows that the data for this call option is eight cents, which means tomorrow I lose one day of time. So now I have 30 days left in this contract. And if Apple price stays the same and nothing else changes, my call option loses the eight cents and is now worth five dollars and ten cents. Now, the difference here is that the decay isn't linear like it is in the rental example. My theta does not stay at eight cents every day. It builds up over time. It actually gets larger as it gets closer to the expiration date. So today, my theta may be eight cents, but as each day passes, including weekends and holidays, the theta will slowly increase and towards the end, I can expect it to shoot up big where the option loses its most value. So if I were to put this on a graph, it'll look more parabolic at the end of it. That's why even if Apple's price doesn't drop and stays the same, and I try to sell back my call option before expiration, I still lose on the theta. I still lose on however many days I used up in that contract. Just like paying $3,000 for a month of rent, if I sublease it, no one's going to pay me the full $3,000 after I used half of the days, especially when they can easily find another room for the same price and get the full 30 days. So the delta tells me how much my option will change with the movement of price. Theta tells me how it'll change through time. And the third, Vega, tells me how it'll change with volatility. What's volatility? Well, let's say there's two college students, both the exact same age and condition, and they're both trying to buy life insurance. Person A doesn't smoke or drink, exercises daily, eats a balanced diet, even drives under the speed limit, and just attends class and studies and lives a pretty stale life. Person B, favorite pastime is base jumping and rock climbing, just a real big adrenaline junkie, already has a bunch of DOIs, smokes, parties, drugs, all of that. Who's paying more for life insurance here? Most likely B, because that person is more unpredictable, there's more of the unknown, much more volatile than A. Even though they're both the same age and condition, the path they're on, the finish line looks different. The day-to-day -day risk fluctuates much more with B. And stocks behave similarly like these people. After all, they're traded by people, so they have different personalities. So even though two stocks can be trading at the exact same price, one option premium may be more expensive, and it's because of the difference in volatility. Now, what if person A all of a sudden gets cancer or some crazy disease? Well, person A's volatility just went up. So the price of getting life insurance also goes up. And things of this nature happen all the time in the stock market. There's good news, bad news, earnings reports, rumors, whatever it is, can change the options volatility. So the Vega estimates how much the value of my options will change from a 1% move in volatility, specifically implied volatility. So there's historical volatility, which looks at the past, what's already happened, the history of how price moved, and implied volatility, 
looks forward into the future. It's the prediction or the expectation of the volatility. So for example, if JRY is trading at $100 per share and the implied volatility is at 20%, that means the market is predicting JRY to have a 20% move in price in either direction over the next year. So if we do the math, 20% of 100 is $20. So the range may go up as high as 120 or drop down to as low as $80 in the next year. If the implied volatility is 10%, 10% of 100 is $10, so the price may fluctuate between 110 and 90. And if it was 5%, the price may fluctuate between 105 and 95. Again, this is just an expectation. It doesn't mean it will happen, which is why it's called implied volatility. So let's go back to my 180 calls on Apple, and the Vega here shows 22 cents. So if the implied volatility increases by 1%, the value of my options goes from 518 to 540. And if the volatility drops 1%, then my option value loses 22 cents and is now worth $4.96. So these are the main three that affect the option premium the most. So just to review, Delta shows the effect on the premium from a $1 move in price. Theta shows the decay in value from the passage of one day. And Vega estimates the change from a 1% move in volatility. Now, there's also the row, the FOMC, Federal Open Market Committee, they have these scheduled meetings to make decisions on whether to keep, raise, or drop interest rates to whatever they feel is best for the economy. And those decisions can affect the options market. Being in a high interest rate environment may be different from being in a very low interest rate environment. So it does affect options in some way, and that's what the row tells me. It tells me how it will affect my option value with a 1% change in the risk-free interest rate. So my Apple call option shows the row is seven cents. Now why this isn't significant as the other Greeks is because let's say the interest rate is at 5%. Well, the row tells us that if the interest rate goes up to 6%, here my option premium will gain seven cents. But a typical move we see in these rate changes is a quarter percent move or 25 basis points. So if I did the math here, it would only be a quarter percent of my row. That's less than a two cent change on my option premium. So it's very insignificant. This isn't something I really need to worry about, but it's good to be aware of and know that it's there, changing my premium in some way. And then finally, there's gamma. The gamma is connected to the delta. So just to bring it to a full circle, again, the delta tells me what the first dollar move in stock is going to do to my options. And the gamma tells me how much the delta will increase or decrease after the first dollar move. So here's my apple again, and delta is the same 58 cents, and now I can see the gamma is three cents. That means if apple's price goes up a dollar to 182.16, I already know my option value goes up to 576, but now I also know what my delta will be for the next dollar move. So the delta now changes from 58 cents to 61. I'm adding the gamma to the delta. That means if Apple moves up another dollar to 183.16, then my option now goes up by the new delta of 61 cents. Easiest way to think about gamma is delta tells me the first dollar move, the gamma tells me the next dollar move. So looking at the gamma, I can kind of gauge how fast my delta will ramp up until it hits a dollar. Because once it hits a dollar, that's where it gets capped off. The delta can't go higher than that because after that, it's just matching dollar for dollar with the stock's price. Now, what happens if it dropped the dollar? Well, in this call option, the delta now decreases by the delta amount. So my delta will drop from 58 cents to 55. So gamma is a way to gauge how fast the delta will accelerate. So those are the five Greeks. To me, there's no way I could trade options without knowing them. So I hope this was helpful. It may take a couple of watches, but let me know if you have any questions. And this is just kind of scratching the surface. I'll go deeper into these in a later video. But for now, I appreciate you for being here and I hope to see you on the next one.